Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a brake master cylinder and booster and how it works to stop your car. Now the brake booster is responsible for multiplying the force from the brake pedal onto the brake master cylinder. In the brake master cylinder there are two pistons that push hydraulic fluid from the reservoir through these lines and then out to the calipers to stop the car. Now the brake booster works off of this vacuum hose that comes from the engine. The master cylinder has these two lines that go over to the brake proportioning valve before it gets split up to each wheel. Now I've removed the dashboard so we can have a closer look at the brake pedal assembly. At the top here we have the pivot point and near the top we've got this push rod that when you press the brake it will actually push the push rod inside of the brake booster. Now having this long leverage arm here gives you a nice mechanical advantage. Now at the top here I have a stoplight switch which will control your brake lights and then I've got a return spring that I can remove here. There's a total of five bolts holding the brake pedal assembly on. We've got one at the top here and then four going around here. Now in order to disconnect the brake pedal from the booster there's this little cotter piece here that holds this pin. I'm going to remove that and I can slide out the pin. And then now I can remove the brake pedal assembly. To remove the master cylinder off of the brake booster there are three 12 millimeter nuts that go around the circumference. Now on this particular master cylinder these two lines go out to the proportioning valve so I'm going to remove it from here as here. My brother's old underwear will come in perfect for sapping up any oil leaks when I disconnect these lines here. And with all the lines free, I can remove the master cylinder. With everything free, I can remove the booster. So here I've got everything removed from the vehicle. We've got the brake pedal assembly on the inside of the vehicle here. And then we've got the firewall, which would sit here that everything mounts to. And then under the hood, we have the brake booster followed by the master cylinder. The master cylinder is the heart of the hydraulics of the brake fluid right. system. The brake booster will push up against the piston inside of here. And inside of here, we've got two pistons that will push. At the top here, we have the reservoir. We've got the cap and inside the cap we've got a little fluid filter here and then on the side we've got this reed switch that can sense the level of the fluid if it gets too low and the hydraulic hookups are on this side over here. Now I'm going to pop off the reservoir. Now if I remove the reed switch you can see it's just basically a magnetic switch that will close when the magnet comes down and contacts it. Now inside of here we have a magnetic float that will float up and down with the level of the fluid. When the fluid level reaches too low the magnet will drop down that will cause these two contacts to short and that'll send a signal out to the light on your dashboard telling you that you're low on brake fluid. This here is the master cylinder. You can see that there's two holes per cylinder from the reservoir. Now I'm going to use a special tool called a snap ring pliers to remove the snap ring. And then now the piston will pop out. This is the primary piston. Now the secondary piston is being held in by this bolt here. Now with this all put together you can see how it works. We've got the primary piston here which will get pushed by the brake booster and that will compress the first spring. Now that will create a pressure in the first part of the cylinder which will come out of here and go to the proportioning valve. The second part of the piston here will also get compressed as this gets pushed in here and that will compress its own spring creating a pressure in the secondary piston over here which will then head out to the proportional valve. Now the reason why we have two pistons is because of redundancy in case one of these pistons get compromised or one of these lines spring a leak you can still bring the car to a complete stop with just two wheels as opposed to not having any at all. Now after a lot of miles these seals can start to wear out and get hard and it will cause an internal leak within the master cylinder. So here we have the brake booster. It's basically a giant metal tank and we've got vacuum pressure that's coming from the engine on this side. This is the little piston here that will push against the master cylinder. Now you can see here this part is actually adjustable so you can adjust the throw of your brake pedal. And now if I pull off the boot we can get a better look at this air filter material inside of here. It's basically just a giant piece of felt. Now the push rod on this side is still mechanically linked to the push rod on this side and that's just for redundancy. Again you can see if I push down on it you'll see the push rod move. So in case this brake booster fails you still have manual brakes. Now I'm going to chop open the brake booster to see what's inside. Okay inside of here it looks like we've got a spring that's about to blow. So inside of the brake booster we have this little valve here that goes out to the vacuum line. In here we have this giant metal plate that has a bunch of little holes in it and then we've got the push rod here that'll push on the master cylinder. Now essentially what we have here is a giant diaphragm that can move in and out. The way this works is we've got engine vacuum on this side here and then on this side we have atmospheric air that when you press the pedal it will enter into the bottom half of this diaphragm. 
Now the differences in pressure between the vacuum side and the atmospheric side is what will cause the diaphragm to push outward this way as soon as you push on the pedal and that's giving you that power assist. You can see we've got this rubbery like diaphragm material that acts as the divider between the atmospheric side and the vacuum side. Now this giant spring here acts as your return when you release your foot from the pressure to push the diaphragm back down. Now I'm just going to make an incision along the outside here so we can cut this rubber to see what it looks like inside. And now with the rubber free you can see this is what it looks like on the back. Now the magic just doesn't end there. We've got a little valve on the inside here that controls which side gets the vacuum. So normally you'd have vacuum on this side from the engine, but when your brake is not depressed, you also have vacuum on this side, and therefore you have that equilibrium so the brake booster isn't pushing the brakes for you. Now when you step on the brake pedal, it actually actuates a little valve inside of here, and that will close off the vacuum side of the pressure, and allow atmospheric pressure to enter on this side, therefore causing the pressure differential to push. Now I'm just going to release this clip here, pop the center piece out, now the way this valve works is pretty simple. We've got the stud that connects to the brake pedal, then we've got a spring, and then we've got this rubber o-ring here. Now when you compress the brake pedal, that'll squish the spring, which will press against this o-ring, against the housing here, sealing it off. That'll cause vacuum to build up on one side of the brake booster, while atmospheric pressure is allowed to come on this side of the brake booster. Now when you release that brake pressure, the spring will bring back this stud, which will bring back this rubber o-ring, allowing vacuum to build up on both sides when you're back to equilibrium. Now I'm going to chop open this brake reservoir to see what's inside. Now I'm going to open this here. This is the float on the inside, and that has a little magnet that can move up and down with the level of the fluid and that will cause the reed switch to turn on and off depending on the level. The way the reed switch works is when there's no magnet nearby it'll read open circuit now when a magnet comes down close to it i.e. the fluid level drops you can see the resistance drops to zero and therefore it's a closed circuit. Finally we've got this giant arm which is your brake pedal and now your brake pedal has this little brake light switch here and that's responsible for deactivating the cruise turning on your tail lights and doing the park lockout on your transmission shifter now you can see here that this switch is actually adjustable. The rest of the brake pedal assembly is pretty much just a strong bracket with a pivot at the top and a thick piece of steel that goes down to the brake pedal here. It's a pretty strong assembly so it can take the force when you slam on the brakes to avoid a pig. And that's pretty much all the components that go into making your brake booster and master cylinder work to stop your car. <laughs>